Southern New England's trusted news source, ABC6 News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. New at noon today, a man expected to be okay after he was stabbed on the corner of Dorrance and Dyer Streets in Providence overnight. Police telling ABC6 a 46-year-old man was stabbed there. Officers arrested a 35-year-old man a short time later in connection to the stabbing. Detectives are now interviewing that suspect and continuing to investigate. Again, that victim is said to be in stable condition. Now to your voice, your vote, and with the Massachusetts primaries in the books, the focus now moves on to the general election in November. And one primary race that really came down to the wire was the Democratic nomination for Bristol County Sheriff, with Attleboro Mayor Paul Hero now the projected winner of that Democratic nomination. ABC6 News reporter Yanni Trigella spoke with him, as well as his new opponent, incumbent Bristol County Sheriff Tom Hodgson. He's live in Dartmouth with more. Hi, Yanni. Yeah, good afternoon, Doreen. Well, yeah, Paul uh, Haro, he first declared the victor of that race last night before it became official, but now the Associated Press is projecting that he is going to win that Bristol County Sheriff Democratic nominee with more than 40% of the vote. And I spoke with both Haro as well as current Sheriff Thomas Hodgson about them getting ready to square off on the campaign trail for the next two months, and they are already going back and forth. He doesn't know if his drug treatment programs work. He doesn't know if his anger management programs work. Democratic nominee for Bristol County Sheriff Paul Haro taking aim at his new opponent in the November general election, incumbent Republican Thomas Hodgson. But it seems like something's going wrong and with the way they're offering rehabilitation. According to the Associated Press, Haro securing the Democratic seat in the November election with more than 40% of the vote beating out his Democratic opponents Nicholas Bernier and George McNeil. While speaking to ABC6 this morning, the Attleboro mayor called out Hodgson, saying the sheriff has become too comfortable in the position he's held since 1997 and that he's not properly preparing inmates to be better citizens after their release. Right now we have a sheriff who has an operation where not everybody is getting a discharge plan and i've heard that from the families i've heard that from the inmates themselves i've heard that from staff when asked about the comments hodgson disagreed saying the prison has strict rules they follow every shift to ensure they're operating at their highest standard you won't find many people who are going to tell you that i'm a guy who sat back and is very comfortable about anything maximizing every opportunity every potential under the powers of the office of sheriff to keep our citizens safe in our community to make sure that inmates are focused on their rehabilitation one way hodgson says they do so is by teaching inmates new tools to life to bring with them once they're out but in bristol county the three-year recidivism rate according to the department of corrections is about 40 percent that means four out of 10 released inmates will end up back in jail within three years, which ranks among the highest in the Commonwealth. Haro says he will look to lower that percentage through the modernization of the jail, analyzing all the programs inside, throwing out the ones that don't work, and expanding on the ones that do. I won't be sheriff sure for life. I like the idea of going in, making a, you know, a difference, making your impact, and then moving on, leave on a high note. I don't want to be sheriff sure for life. And we did reach out to both McNeil as well as Bernier's camp on if they plan to support Paul Haro as he continues on this Democratic nominee for the Bristol County Sheriff. We, not, we have not heard back from them yet. And as for Haro and Hodgson, they say these next two months are going to be full of campaigning, going door to door and speaking with as many citizens as they can to try to sell why they should be the next Bristol County Sheriff or stay as Bristol County Sheriff for Hodgson. Reporting live in Dartmouth, Yanni Trigales, ABC6 News. Yanni, thank you. And voters in Massachusetts had many other critical decisions to make as they headed to the polls on Tuesday. In the Democratic primary, it was Attorney General Maura Healey up against Sonia Rosa Chang-Diaz. And Maura Healey took the party nomination in a landslide, over 85% of the vote. If she wins the general election, she'll be the first woman and openly gay governor elected in the state of Massachusetts. On the Republican side, a much closer race between Chris Doty and Jeff Deal. Deal taking the nomination with a little over 56% of the vote. And in the race for Lieutenant Governor, three Democrats vying for the nomination. Kimberly Driscoll, the clear winner, with over 45% of the vote, beating Eric Lesser and Tammy Gavea. On the Republican side, Leah Allen and Kate Campanelli still very close. 85% of the votes counted. Leah Allen has 52%. And in the Bristol County race for District Attorney, two Democrats running to be DA. The winner of the primary takes the job. Incumbent Thomas Quinn winning by a landslide last night, taking 
home almost 66 percent of the vote. Attorney Shannon McMahon with only 34 percent. This will be Quinn's third term as district attorney for Bristol County. And finally, in what is expected to be a tight battle to replace Maura Healy as Massachusetts Attorney General Andrea Campbell ran away with the win. Campbell has received more than half of all votes counted so far. Shannon lists Reardon, her top competition, sits just under 34 percent. And the Associated Press has projected Campbell as the winner. Campbell will face Republican Jay McMahon in the general election. And now to the weather as we take a live look outside with our sky cam right now. Much drier out there today, but there's still a little coolness to the air out there, Chelsea. Yeah, today's definitely kind of our in-between day. We had the torrential rain Monday and then just a steady rain kind of all day long yesterday. Now today, we are significantly drier. There's still a lot of clouds around and a persistent breeze from the northeast, and that's keeping us on the cooler side of things. Temperatures right now are only in the upper 60s. We were only in the upper 60s yesterday. Those dew points in the low 60s, and we're going to continue to see cooler than average temperatures as we head through the rest of the afternoon with temperatures right now at about 70 for Boston, 70 for Norwood, 71 in Westerly. Average highs for the early part of September are still in the upper 70s, close to 80 degrees. So we're significantly cooler than that outside today. Again, there's a persistent breeze from the northeast. There's a lot of clouds in place and a few little sprinkles around. The rain that we're getting today is very light, very isolated, and that'll be the case for the rest of the afternoon. Nothing overly organized on our satellite radar image. You may even get some sun popping through at times. We've seen it here in Providence, here and there. For the most part, though, a lot of clouds for the rest of the day today. We continue to dry out and clear out over night. We get much brighter in the coming days. So I'll have a look at your full forecast in just a few minutes. Story. Chelsea, thank you. We have new details today on President Biden's visit to Massachusetts next week. He's this going to Boston on Monday to make a County. speech on the I cancer appreciate moon the strong shot. support in this election. Uh, during my past almost eight years, this attorney, we've done a lot of good things as an we office. We've established a Biden's strong visit. record. Uh, he's coming to Boston on Monday. He's going to be making a speech on the cancer moonshot and the goal of ending cancer as we know it. Those remarks are going to be at the John F. Kennedy Library and Museum on the 60th anniversary of JFK's moonshot speech. The White House also says that earlier in the day, he'll be speaking on investments in his infrastructure law. More details to come on that. Still to come here on ABC 6 News at noon, we've told you about the Massachusetts primary results. Now all eyes turn to the ocean state. We have a breakdown of the key races in Rhode Island. Plus focusing on housing and the race for Providence mayor, we'll hear from Nerva LaFortune about her plans in the first of our three-part series.
more coverage on your voice, your vote today. We are now less than a week out from the Rhode Island primary. There are a lot of big races to keep your eyes on. In the race for governor, there are five Democratic candidates vying for Rhode Island's top office. Those include Matt Brown, Helena Folks, Nellie Gorbea, Luis Munoz, and current governor Dan McKee. On the Republican side, it is Ashley Kalis and Jonathan Ricciatelli. Whomever wins the primary will take on the winner on the Democratic side in the general in November. And in the race for Lieutenant Governor in Rhode Island, three women are competing for the Democratic nomination. They are Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos, State Senator Cynthia Mendez, and State Rep Deb Ruggiero. On the Republican side, Andrew Gukian and Paul Pence are facing off. And in the race for Rhode Island's 2nd Congressional District, six candidates are running the Democratic primary to replace the retiring Jim Langevin. They include General Treasurer Seth Magazina, Magaziner, Sarah Morgenthau, former State Reps David Siegel and Spencer Dickinson, as well as Omar Ba and Joy Fox. The winner will face Republican Alan Fung in the general in November. We're also following the high-profile race for Mayor of Providence. All three candidates on the Democratic ticket, meaning whomever wins on September 13th will be the next mayor of the capital city. They are Gonzalo Cuervo, Nerva La Fortune and Brett Smiley. La Fortune is currently a city councilor representing Ward 3. Cuervo served as Secretary of State Nellie Gorbea as Chief of Staff, and Smiley was a top aide of former Governor Gina Raimondo. And we are hearing from one of those candidates for mayor as ABC6 continues to cover the big issues in the race. Last week we talked about education, and this week we hit on the housing and rent crisis. First up is candidate Nerva La Fortune. Here's ABC6 anchor Casey Camps. We need more housing. It's economics. The supply is low, the demand is high, it's going to drive up the cost of housing. And as simple as that statement may sound, candidate Nerva La Fortune still says her plan for solving the city's housing and rent problem is a comprehensive one. We have to build housing across all income spectrum, from low to moderate income, and also for the workforce. Coupled with her plan for education, affordable housing is her other major campaign focus. She says it starts by getting everyone in the room together to discuss a plan from state officials to those who have already developed affordable housing in the community. And that's just the start. Attaching the affordability component to our tax stabilization agreement so that we can build housing across all income spectrum, looking at our zoning policies, um, as well as inclusionary zoning in developing communities, neighborhoods. Now, tomorrow and Friday, we're going to hear from the Fortune's opponents, Gonzalo Cuervo and Brett Smiley. Again, Rhode Island's primary just six days away now. It is September 13th. For more information on the races and the candidates, check out the election guide on our website. That's abc6.com. And still to come here on ABC6 News at noon, a teen vaping settlement. How much Juul will pay up for marketing e-cigarettes to teens? And we'll get a look at the full seven-day forecast with Chelsea when we return.
now to your health. And a new kind of COVID-19 vaccine is becoming available this week, including here in Rhode Island. It is the first new formula since the shots came out in 2020. So experts say it offers better protection against current forms of the virus. Health officials say COVID boosters are likely to become an annual option starting this fall. They say people can get them the same day as their flu shots. And now, your ABC6 Storm Tracker weather with meteorologist Chelsea Priest. Well, we had that torrential rain, of course, on Monday that led to all of the flooding. And then yesterday, we had a steady rainfall happening pretty much all day long. We picked up another inch and a half yesterday at TF Green Airport, bringing our monthly total now to close to four inches, where typically in the first week of September, we only pick up three quarters of an inch. So we actually have above average rainfall now at TF Green Airport, where our official records are kept. Now, that still keeps our yearly rainfall totals for TF Green Airport. Many other spots have caught up. But for TF Green Airport, still just about three inches below average for our year to date. Now, we get an updated drought monitor tomorrow. It's going to factor in Monday's rainfall, not Tuesday's. The cutoff is Tuesday morning. So we'll have to wait another whole week to get the full results on that drought monitor from the rain that we had in the early part of this week. But I'm certain that there will be some changes out there in our drought monitor when we get that update tomorrow morning. Now over Providence, you're seeing a lot of clouds and there's still a few little spotty showers around today. For the most part, though, we're drying out and we will gradually start to clear out with the clouds today, though, and there's a persistent breeze from the northeast. We're staying kind of cool. Our temperatures are only in the mid to upper 60s in most locations. Average high is in the upper 70s this time of year, so we are 10 degrees below average right now. We'll likely come up to about 70 degrees, but again, pretty cool for this time of year, especially with that breeze coming in from the northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour with a few gusts at times, especially along the coastline, close to 20 miles per hour. Now today our highs top out only around 70 degrees. It's a cooler than average day, but the trend is upward. Tomorrow we'll make it into the mid to upper 70s range, depending on where you are, and then upper 70s and low 80s for Friday and through the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, looking like some really nice days. We dry out, we get brighter, and we'll see sunshine through the weekend. Satellite radar image, this is over the past six hours, shows you with that northeasterly breeze. You're looking at some spotty showers, mainly for southeastern Mass and along the coastline. Otherwise, a lot of clouds outside today. Nothing super organized or significant, but still a little cloudy, still a little damp outside. You get a few pops of sun here and there. Now, as the day goes on, we continue to dry. We will gradually start to clear out overnight. And tomorrow goes from partly to mostly sunny conditions pretty quickly. Temps come up into the mid to upper 70s range and more sunshine continues for Friday with temperatures into the upper 70s and low 80s. Quick update on the tropics. There's a lot of activity starting to pick up. Hurricane Danielle way up in the Atlantic. Also Hurricane Earl now forecasted to become a category four hurricane at some point late this week into the early part of the weekend. Passing to the east of Bermuda, staying way out in the ocean, far away from the eastern seaboard. That being said, with that big of a storm out in the ocean, Late this week and more so into the weekend and the early part of next week, we may notice elevated waves here at our beaches and some dangerous rip currents will be possible. Mostly cloudy today, a few spotty showers still possible. Overnight, gradual clearing. It's a cool night. Temps dip down to the 50s by tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow you're looking at partly to mostly sunny conditions. Highs will be in the mid to upper 70s. Seven day forecast shows temperatures in the mid to upper 70s and even low 80s on Friday. Sunshine for the weekend with temperatures in the low 80s. Chelsea, thank you. Still to come here on the news at noon, a new Apple iPhone. Details on the big announcement today and a massive settlement from Jewel e-cigarettes accused of marketing to kids.
A big event at Apple today. The company is expected to unveil the iPhone 14. Reports say we should expect at least two updates to the Apple Watch and possibly more information on Apple's rumored virtual reality headset. There should also be an official release date for iOS 16. New iPads or iMac computers likely won't be out until October, though. E-cigarette industry leader Juul has agreed to pay nearly half a billion dollars to settle claims that it targeted children with ads for its vaping products. ABC's Alexis Christophorus has the details. E-cigarette maker Juul has agreed to pay nearly $439 million to 34 states and territories over its advertising practices. The two-year investigation finding Juul deliberately marketed its products to young people, even though e-cigarette sales to children are illegal. Marketing efforts including free samples, ads featuring young, trendy models, launch parties, social media posts, and selling products and flavors like mango and mint, popular with underage users. While traditional cigarette use has plummeted among youth, vaping is skyrocketing. In 2019, more than 5 million young people said they tried vaping within the past 30 days. Just the year before, that number was 3.6 million. I'm under no illusions um, and cannot claim that it will stop youth vaping. It continues to be an epidemic. It continues to be a huge problem. But we have essentially taken a big chunk out of what was once a market leader. While not admitting guilt, Jewel saying in a statement in part, terms of the agreement are aligned with our current business practices. We remain focused on the future as we work to fulfill our mission to transition adult smokers away from cigarettes. As part of the settlement, Jewel can no longer use cartoons or product placement in its marketing and its ads can't show users under the age of 35. Jewel still faces nine separate lawsuits from other states and hundreds of personal suits brought on behalf of teenagers and others who say they became addicted to its vaping products. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. And still to come here on ABC 6 News at noon, a most unwelcome visitor in a California family's kitchen. The damage a bear left behind while helping itself to dinner and the leftovers. Plus, Chelsea has another look at your afternoon forecast right after this. A family in California had a very hungry, very unwelcome visitor recently. A black bear entered their home while they were there and helped itself to everything in the kitchen until police arrived. Body cameras captured the wild scene as Simi Valley police made their way into this home 
to shoot the shoo the bear out, rather shoo shoo the bear, and up into a tree after the homeowner heard some strange sounds coming from her kitchen on Sunday morning. That's a pretty big bear to have had inside your kitchen. Imagine waking up like thinking that it might be your partner, or right. somebody else, your kids. No. Yep, bear. Yeah, although kids do normally make that much noise yeah, like a bear in your kitchen. Too, right? Yes, exactly. It's pretty, pretty spot on. <laughs> it may have been screaming. It's, it's a bear. It's not me. It was a bear. That's, That's going to be the excuse yeah, later. Know, right? mm -hmm. Look out. Uh, we are looking at uh, a few little spotty showers still out there today. A lot of clouds still out there today. It's breezy and cool, but tomorrow we get brighter and brighter, and we're going to stay really sunny and nice through the end of the week and through our upcoming weekend. Temperatures should make it into the upper 70s and low 80s with dry weather. We're drying out after all of our rain earlier this week. So. Yeah, that's a pretty stellar weekend yeah, ahead. Not bad. <laughs> Sounds good. Not <laughs> Thanks, Chelsea. So thank you for joining us for the news at noon. The news continues first at four. Have a great day, everybody.